Hello and welcome to today's Bible study from College Lutheran Church and from me, Pastor David Drebus. It's good for us to study God's Word and we continue to do that, working our way through the list of the top 100 essential Bible passages. We come today to passage number 58, Jesus Heals a Paralytic, Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. This is one of my uh, favorite stories in the Bible. It involves uh, these friends of a man who is paralyzed, uh, digging a hole in the roof of the house where Jesus lived. Um, I'd forgotten that in, um, until rereading this recently, that uh, this is actually Jesus' own home uh, that people have crowded around. They're in Capernaum, his hometown. And uh, my Bible says that likely the roof was a mixture of mud and sticks, so they're kind of digging through that in order to um, reach Jesus who's inside his house while the crowd has gathered around and it's impossible for people to get any closer. Um, it's a great story. It's also challenging in many ways. So, uh, of course, one of, the, one of the challenging things, if uh, you read this just sequentially, uh, this man's friends bring him to Jesus because they're hoping he will be healed, and Jesus looks at the man and says, your sins are forgiven. So he doesn't give the man what he or his friends uh, presumably wanted. And I think that's a helpful reminder that we don't always receive from God what we want. Uh, hopefully we receive from God what we need. Uh, but our wants and our needs are different things, and God knows better than we do uh, what we truly need. Um, and I know that rationally, but I also know if I was this man's friends, or if I was the man himself uh, on the pallet, um, unable to walk, um, I know rationally that having my sins forgiven is more important than being able to walk, and yet I can't get over the fact that I would be disappointed if Jesus only forgave me my sins. And when I say that out loud, um, that's, a, that's a strange thing to admit, um, but if I'm being honest, I think um, that is how I would feel, even if I know in my head and if I know um, in my heart that it's a much bigger thing to have your sins forgiven. Um, that, that feeling is still there, and I think that's just something uh, to wrestle with. It's a way that this story challenges me. Now, of course, Jesus goes on to heal the man, uh, but one of the reasons he does that is to prove that he has the power to forgive sins. The crowd won't believe that he can forgive sins if they don't see something uh, amazing. And so in this case, the healing is a proof that Jesus is the sort of person who can forgive sins because he's also the sort of person who can heal a man who cannot walk. And so that's the comforting and the challenging thing in the text, right? Like, it's great that he eventually heals the man, um, but it's also challenging to me uh, that, um, that it would take something so concrete like that to prove that Jesus can do uh, the sort of forgiving things that uh, he says he can do. So all of that is puzzling and challenging, but the thing that I find... Um, also puzzling, maybe not the most puzzling thing about this story, but the other thing I just really like about it is in verse 5, after they have lowered the man through the roof to reach Jesus, verse 5 tells us, when Jesus saw their faith, Jesus said to the man, my son, your sins are forgiven. And it's fascinating that the man hasn't really done anything in this text, it's his friends who have brought him to Jesus. And Jesus forgives the sins of the man in the bed um, when he sees the faith of those who have brought him to Jesus, those who have lowered him down to Jesus from the roof. And to me, that challenges this individ individualistic approach many of us have uh, to faith, the idea that you know, I just need to get um, my heart right with Jesus and then I'll be saved. There's room for thinking that way, uh, but here we have a case where Jesus sees the faith of those who surround this man, and because of their faith, he forgives the sins of the man in the bed. And so I think our relationship with one another as a community of faith is much more complicated than that individualistic, just me and Jesus relationship that's often spoken of. 
And our relationship with God is much more complicated than we realize. And so this story speaks to those complications. Um, That may be an odd word to end us with, uh, but I do think it is comforting that our scriptures are just as complicated as the lives we live, uh, both within community and in terms of how we relate to our Lord. Um, It's one of the reasons I trust what the Bible says is because it's just as complicated as uh, my life and my faith can be. So, in a roundabout way, that is comforting to me, and I hope it is to you as well. Peace be with you.